Hey, what's going on guys? It's Nistro here and we are here today talking about this crazy new support coming out of the Terminal World um, dual terminal set coming out next year. And we have gotten some completely insane new Genic support. It, this is like ultimate offering on legs as a link one, y you know, <laughs> and the fact that um, the Gen X cards before really did not have much playability because um, a lot of them relied on their normal summons. It's not like uh, Ice Barrier where they relied on having more monsters on field than you can manage to summon in like a single turn. Gen X just couldn't play because even if you got to normal summon all of these cards, it's like they didn't immediately get you anything. Like not even uh, too many of the Gen X synchros were too good, like maybe other than Axel back in the day because they just did not do enough to like warrant, you know, using them over other synchro staples, you know, um, back in like the 5Ds Tengu plant era. So to now get cards that make a lot of this stuff playable is first off a breath of fresh air. It's almost like what happened to Super Heavy. It, this is like a complete turnaround compared to how the deck might have played before because might have the way it might have played before you might have had to use other engines and stuff now it's like the genix engine by itself is really capable because of this one card this one link one and we're only playing one copy of it because you only need one copy you're going to go off so hard that you don't need to play more than one now the genix engine doesn't have too many spells and traps so we're we're teching in a super heavy package here to go into either baron or gear gigant so in the same way that rescue ace or Vanquish Soul would play super heavy to um, either make a negate or to grab their starter, we're doing the same thing. We're either making this Baron to protect the Link 1 from any hand traps, or we're making a Girgigon to grab uh, Genix Turbo. In case we happen to not draw one of our 12, uh, not even 12, in, in case we don't happen to draw one of our 15 starters, <laughs> by the way, because um, fun fact, not all the Genix monsters are machines, so um, magma is is a pyro so uh, bonfire is a starter and basically you create a chain of normal summons um, so with turbo power planner uh, magma and crusher all these cards can search each other and it it's sort of like this loop so turbo searches power planner power planner searches magma magma searches crusher crusher can search turbo and so all four of these cards not cannot just search each other but they can also all search a tuner so Turbo can search Genix Recycled, the level one tuner. Planner can search uh, Genix Ally Birdman or even uh, Genix Ally Remote. Um, it, controller, eh, you know, you kind of don't need to play controller. Like everything past these Ash Blossoms are like kind of like optional. But I think like at the very least you should, Birdman at three is a staple. And once you read the link one, you'll figure out why. Magma. Um, it can add level twos, so it can add either Overseer or Turing, which is uh, another new um, Genix monster. And it only adds our Genix level twos. I don't think there are too many, um, like there are a lot of Genix level twos that you can, that are in the game that like you can't add, but if it's a R Genix and really there's only three of them, right? And we're playing all three in our list, Crusher, um, Overseer and Turing, and then Crusher can add uh, level four Argenix monsters from our deck to our hand, which means we can add either the new Undyne or we can add Turbo. And then, you know, um, Undyne is not a tuner normally, but it can banish a tuner from grave, a, a Genix tuner from graveyard to become a tuner. So it can become a level four Genix tuner, which is great because we need um, a dark tuner plus a non tuner monsters to make uh, Arms Genesis return zero, right? And so. All your tuners are dark except for Undyne, but Undyne, um, it gains the monsters attribute that it banishes. So if it banishes any of your other tuners to become a tuner, it will become dark. So that's not, so it's kind of a non issue um, that Undyne is not a dark monster. And basically, this is like a access code negate effect where um, if your opponent activates a monster effect, you could banish a monster with the same attribute as that monster, but a different one from those banished to activate this effect already. You negate that effect and then hold on hold the fuck on let me put this in front um you negate that effect and then if you do you destroy the monster or you, you negate activation excuse me and then destroy the monster and there's no once per turn on that it's only 
is not even once per chain. Like, you can just keep doing it for each attribute in your graveyard. Meaning, like, if you get all six attributes of monsters in your graveyard, you can negate six different effects per turn. Which is sort of like a magic key kind of thing. Like, I haven't seen something like this uh, since magic key. And then once per turn, you can target up to six of your monst uh, Genix monsters that are with different attributes, banished or in your graveyard, shuffle them into deck, then destroy up to that s many cards in the spell and trap zone. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? He gets to be a goddamn Harpy's Fetter Duster and a, you know, Appaloosa in the same card? I mean, that's pretty fucking insane, right? Now, clearly, you know, um, be because of... Um, not only the fact that all the Genix monsters are different attributes, but because you're going to be going into a bunch of different synchros, it won't be too hard to fill up your grave with a bunch of different attributes of monsters. Um, and thanks to Repair Genix Controller, I don't even think I've read this card to you guys yet. Um, <laughs> I've been too busy explaining the what the Genix monsters do. Um, so basically, uh, you can only summon... Re Genix Repair Controller once per turn. If this card is Link Summon, you can add a Genix monster from a graveyard to your hand. Basically, the monster that you use to summon it gets to be added from graveyard to hand. And then once per chain, which is again, not once per turn, just like the Synchro, it is not once per turn. Uh, if a Genix monster is added to your hand, except by drawing it, you can immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon a Genix monster, but you're locked into only Synchro Summoning using a Genix Tuner for the rest of the turn. So basically, um... All four of these guys, they basically get to summon and then keep going into each other. The only thing is, is that you might have caught that, like, all these happen on normal summon. So this happens on normal summon, this happens on normal summon. That means you basically cannot stop until you choose to stop. Like, if, in, in theory, like, um, let's say you start with um, Turbo, and then you go Power Planner, and then you go Magma, then you go Crusher. If you start with any of these, like, you don't stop until either your board is full or until you put a tuner on board, right? And then you're like, okay, now I put on put a monster on field that doesn't have an effect on normal summon. You don't have to activate repair controller, but, like, you will get so much plus if you just let it go all the way to the end, right? And so that's why we're playing cards like Herald of Arclight, because um, depending on which Genix that we start with, we could uh, potentially make a negate before summon five, so at least we can play around Nib because we can only summon a repair Genix controller once per turn, and after its and after its effect resolves, we can only synchro summon. So, like, if this thing gets removed from field, we lose our whole combo. Um, so it's a very like glass cannon kind of combo deck where it will. It's a very big fucking cannon. Um, <laughs> if it gets to go all the way off, but at the same time, it's like, it's very fragile. So you, you want to make multiple interruptions like Baron and Herald before you start going into your other synchros. And that's why like, there's like so many cards in this extra deck that say like negate. Um, and we can even take advantage of the new Manadium synchro. Now I halfway through, through testing, I realized that this thing was a tuner. So that means like the only thing you could summon with this is Visus Amritara, but that's not even an issue because Visus Amritara gets in the, gets another um, counter trap card, which is a negate. And it's not even like that much of a brick because if we summon any synchro, well, even if we don't go into Visus Amritara, it's still a negate. So um, it's it, it's a pretty good um, tech card to play thanks to you know the fact that the Manadium synchro gets to you know get so much off of so little we play trish and omega to like hand loop our opponent you can most people make omega first i've been seeing a lot of people make omega like earlier on in their turn just to like hand loop the opponent for one um and so they start with one less card and they have to deal with so many negates maybe you could potentially banish that super poly which i'm trying to find ways to make chaos angel consistent in this deck i'm not really seeing them but yeah um Basically, we are able to get so much off of so little because of these normal summons. It's almost in the realm of how super heavy was when they first started. So, let's look at a few test hands that I've uh, done here. We're going to fast forward, right? So, we're starting with Argenix Crusher here, right? And so, Crusher is okay to start with. 
in reality, you want to start with either Turbo or with Power Planner. Those are the two best ones to start with because those two can almost guarantee that you make a Herald of Arc Light before summon number five. Um, but Crusher and Magma can't get you a uh, negate before summon number five unless you draw a super heavy engine. So you're really vulnerable to Nib um, and other hand traps. So we start with Crusher here. We search Turbo. A link into a uh, repair controller. Um, then we get to normal summon out the turbo. Turbo gets to search power planner. Normal summon the power planner. Gets to search undyne. Um, and I realized uh, I have the other undyne in our hand. This is the only other water that we're playing in our list. And undyne has to mill a water from deck to grave to search Janice controller. So I was like, no, we're, we're not going to get grab undyne here. We're going to grab magma. Um, even though we already have the bonfire, none of these Genix are once per turn, so it's not even that big of a deal. So we go Magma, then we go into Crusher, because I figure, like, we can't make a, um, negate before summon number five anyway, so let's just play into the nib, right? Because we lose the nib anyway. So, so let's just play into it. Um, so then, then we go into Turing, and the great thing about Turing is that, um, if it's used as a... As a synchro for a Genix monster, it can be treated as level three. So that means three plus three plus four equals ten, which means now we have just made a our first negate. Um, and since we have three different attributes in grave, dark, fire, or wind, I mean we could. <laughs> it's a little too late to stop DD Crow. A little too late to stop an Ash, but we could potentially stop. Um, I don't know if I can know. DD Crow or, or a Bestial or something <laughs> at this point. Uh, but either way, uh, now we activate Bonfire, which, you know, is coming out next year, Maze of Millennia. It's a little, it, it kind of sucks that Volcanics released this year without getting this card because this card was more, was like one of the most important cards. <laughs> you know, it's a Rota for, um, for Pyro monsters. And I mean, shit, you know, it's pretty great. You know, I think they could put Rota back to three if they put a hard ones per turn on it, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, so we get Magma, and because we added one from deck to hand, Genix controller trigger. So basically, you want to fill your board up, make a play, or make a synchro, and then you want to have, you want to save ways to add monsters, add Genix monsters to your hand. That's why we're, we're on triple monster reincarnation, because even though we have, like, enough tuners here to make another synchro or, like, another negate, it's like, we want to be able to keep going. So... We made Magma here. Genix controller, right, um, allows us to summon Recycled. And then uh, here we're gonna go into Manadium Tr Triliscuta coming out of uh, Age of Overlord, which is uh, about a week at time of recording. And so, although this is a tuner, Genix Turing is also, a, is also a tuner. And it's like, as long as a Genix tuner is used as material, then it's fine, right? And to be fair, it's like Gen X, the Gen X monster would have to f fulfill the tuner condition of this card because it's definitely not a light monster. So it's it's a tuner, right? So um, you're more than able to make Vesus um, Emritari here. And we searched the Manadium reframing, I accidentally milled it, but now we have a negate. So I'm using the monster Rian card to drop the Undyne. And the reason why I'm dropping Undyne is because of its graveyard effect, uh, which will come into a little um, which will become a little relevant later, but, um, I'm basically monster reincarnating, dropping the Undyne to summon, I mean, to add back the Undyne, um, which you can do, right? As long as you have a monster already in grave, it doesn't matter what monster you add back, even the one that, like, you can, you can add back the one that you discarded. Um, it's like Lumina, um, Light Sword Summoner, you know, you can summon back the Light Sword that, that you discard. If, as long as you already have a proper targeting grave, and we have plenty in our graveyard to add back. Um, and it's like, yeah, Monster Reincarnation is vulnerable to... Um, what do I want to say? Bestials and Didi Crow, but... Uh, Undyne to water. <laughs> and even if they did have Bestials, uh, we can... Uh, we can use Return Zero to banish Recycled, and then... Um, get recycled uh to yeah 
Uh, so now we're, we're we're adding back Undyne, and then we're summoning Turbo, and then we're adding back Power Planner, and then we're summoning out the Undyne, right? So now that our field is full, Undyne can banish a tuner from my graveyard, become a dark tuner, and then we can go into XL Synchro Stardust Dragon, and then we get to special him back to Turing, and then we get to go into Baron, and then Baron. Um, we're going to use Baron's effect to pop our own Power Planner, because we want to create um, space on the field um, to create like one one or two more synchro plays. So now we have um, so now we have Undyne's effect popping off, right? So Undyne's going to add itself and Turing back to hand. And yeah, I know it kind of sucks that we lost our dark t uh, our dark type in the graveyard, but like at this point, it's kind of like whatever, you know. Like if they didn't negate it already, like now that we have the Baron, it kind of doesn't matter as much. And so we go Genix Controller, we go into Power Planner, and we're gonna Power Planner to get the Birdman. And we're gonna Birdman and Power Planner for Herald of Arclay. And the reason why these get banished is because when you resolve Undyne's Graveyard Effect to add itself and another Genix monster and Grave back to hand, you, for the rest of the turn, any monster sent to your graveyard, or any card sent to your graveyard is banished. Which means that um, some of our Genix materials are going to get banished for the sake of just being you know, um, for being used for Synchro Summon. But this is one, two, three. It's one, two, three. And then that's a negate for every attribute that is not dark. So that's five attributes. So that's eight negates off of just one opening hand. And I know it seems like kind of gimmicky, right? Like it's very, it's very much a glass cannon. I see people saying that this, this is going to break the game. I don't think so. Um, you could definitely um probably set up for a you could probably set up for a um king of calamities if you like um open the right hand obviously i don't know any actual combos yet i'm just sort of like doing test hands and just seeing how far um we can go with this stuff but uh this is so this is actually a little spice um i want to do like divine one of miss valley so there's actually this really funny card in our deck called uh, Genix Blast Fan, right? So before I took this out, because it, when this card is special summon, you get to add a dark Genix monster from deck to hand, which means we not just get to have the option to add any, uh, you know, controller or um, overseer or birdman, but we also would have had access to more of the Genix ally engine. Which all of these are are like dark type monsters, which maybe not all of them are, are like great, but like a monster like Duradark, uh, he can pop a dark monster on your opponent's field once per turn or something. I don't know. Um, or, you know, you could have searched Oracle, which, you know, Oracle is level one tuner, but it can only be used for a single summon of a Genix monster, which maybe it, it may not be too useful in like your normal combo because for return zero i think turing is like the way better tuner just because it just level manipulates so like it's it's level manipulation is so um it's so efficient at like what it does that i think like it's like the only one that you should be using to go into return zero unless you literally can't um and it's like literally like one two like because this this can count as level three or level like one two or three it's like it's so free and then, so you have like a tuner for every level up to four. So one, two, three, four. It's great. I mean, technically you can take out Recycled and just play a second Turing. Um, but, you know, Turing can't be searched by Turbo. So that's why we're playing Recycled. Um, and Birdman's level three. So, you know, you, you don't need to play this, you know, but like it's just the ability to get this off of Magma and then go into like a whole bunch of different like you can go into like this magma into this into manadium and then manadium into visus and then that gets you a counter trap so that's actually not too bad of a start but yeah this is why i'm not playing axel because none of our because the only monster i think that's worth special summoning off from grave is like blast fan and that's not even a machine type like so i don't understand why some people are like going so hard over blast fan um, and for like going so hard over Axel, like little, like look, people have bought this card out, and I, I I just don't get it. I'm like, what are you guys cooking with Axel? There's there's no 
good machine Genix monster to summon from Graveyard. <laughs> um, like, okay, maybe you can summon, like, a Rev Synchron or something, but, like, it can already summon itself back. Like, maybe if you're setting up for, like, a, you know, um, yeah, like a Crimson Dragon play, maybe. Like, maybe uh, you could summon back, like, a Motorbike or something that you've used and then go into Crimson Dragon, but you can't use Motorbike as a tuner, so... What tuner are you summoning? Because uh, Oracle can only be used for this thing. Controller is only level 3. I don't think there is any level 4 Genix tuner. Except for Undyne. I don't think there's any level 4 Genix tuner. Uh, search. Yeah. They're all level three and below, so I, I like you can't even go for Crimson Dragon. Like, so that's why I don't see the point of this card. I see some people playing Triforce. I'm like, I don't get it. This card's ass. I don't see why you would go into this thing other than to like work up into like a, a Crystal Wing or something. I don't see why you would go into Triforce. Uh, Windmill Genix, I can see why people would pl might want to play this because it can um, discard one to pop spells and traps your opponent controls and it's not as hard to summon as ally of justice return zero and it's like return zero is a generic synchro like by all means like a dark tuner like assault synchron plus st uh excels stardust can also make you return zero so this will not just be broken for genix like any synchro deck um from synchron to um other thing can make this and yeah so let's get into the second um and actually, it's funny, I end up not using the Divine Wind of Mist Valley at all. But, uh, you know, because we have the Super Heavy Samurai here, I was like, this is this is a, a really good replay to show you guys the potential of what the Super Heavy Samurai can do, right? So you get to go into the Guy Booster. Guy Booster gets to equip a Special Summon itself, gets to make Excel Synchro. And then um, you get to chain block the Excel Synchro because of Wakashi. I don't know, in case they have Ghost Spell or something. And then you get to go into Baron. So, before we've even used our normal summon, we get to go into Baron. Now, we already have both Turbo and Crusher, which is really good. And we also drew a Monster Reincarnation, which is amazing as well, because now that means we have guaranteed follow-up. But we don't really need the follow-up as much in this hand, because we already have Baron. Right? Like, the reason why you would need follow-up in, like, your original opening hand is because you want to make a Herald of Arclight, and then you want to continue your combos. But because we already have the Baron, we kind of don't need the follow-up. So we're going Magma, Magma into Overseer, and, you know, at this point I was, like, less familiar with, like, what I was doing, so I went into Turbo here, and then I went into another Power Planner, and Power Planner this time is going to get me Birdman, and I could have, like, I could have played this way better, I could have just summoned out the um, Overseer, and that would have been 2, 1, 3, 4, that would have been 10, so I wouldn't have needed to use Birdman, um... And actually, I think, like, now I'm thinking about it, like, uh, Turing would have been a better summon here, or a better search off of, um, Turing would have been a better search off of Magma, because that way I would have had, um, a way easier time getting to level 10 without needing to sacrifice all, all four of my monsters. So now we're going to use Birdman, right? And now I've wasted a Birdman, you know, summon. Even though it's not once per turn, it's like, you want to use as, as few of these as possible, right? Like... Um, because these are your follow-up, right? These continue your combos, unlike, like, nothing else in my hand continues a combo. Like, I just happen to draw the monster reincarnation. Um, so now we're going into, uh, another power planner. Power planner gets his bird man. And this time I'm going to bounce back the, I, I accidentally bounced back to turbo. I wanted to bounce back to power planner because I, I just felt like it was it was the better play. Um, and then I kind of goofed here because I like I meant to synchro with the Birdman and the planner. Actually, you know what? Yeah. So. Here's what I did, because I'm now now I'm confusing myself. So I bounce back the turbo, then I synchro with the Birdman and one of the power planners. That's 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 what I did, right? So now I'm gonna use the Baron effect to pop my own power planner to clear the board. Um and then I'm gonna go into the Monadium Tr Trilisquia. 
and then Manadium Trilskuta um, goes into what I thought was possible at the time was Crystal Wing, but now I know you can only go into um, Visus Amritar from this. So basically, we would have one, two, three negates plus the counter trap, and now we have every attribute in Grave. You know, we have plenty of each attribute. <laughs> you know, we have double power planner, overseer. We have every attribute except water, actually. So, so we don't have water. So if you're playing like mermails or you know deep sea, then you know pop off, I guess. But um, three negates with return zero. And I think like wow, this is really great, really interesting, and I think there's a lot more that can happen from this. I don't think it's like the most broken deck. This kind of reminds me of like Adventure Synchron, where S Adventure Synchron can pop the fuck off, like it can go crazy. But, you know, they have to open that fucking right of Aramis here to make sure that their junk speeder is protected. Because you, you stop the junk speeder, you stop the turn. In the same way, you stop the Genix controller, you stop the turn. And there's way more points where you can interact with Genix controller compared to junk speeder. It's like you can interact with, with the normal summon, you can interact with the search, you can interact with Genix controller itself. There are so many hand traps that stop this combo just straight up where th that's why I feel like you kind of need to play the super heavy stuff. Otherwise, like, I, I don't really see this deck doing too well. Um, don't get me wrong, it's it's definitely cracked, but um, I think there's a lot more that this deck will need before it, it can become a competitive contender. Um, but people will definitely try. People will definitely try to make this competitive. Um, I think it has a decent going second because it really only needs one card to start, like one card plus bike to be protected from negates going first this card this deck going first will be absolutely insane whereas like this deck going second you know maybe it'll need some work maybe we'll need like more space for like board breakers and such uh like droplet or um dark ruler kaijus kurikara um the world is still our oyster but this is a very fra this is a way more fragile version of like adventure synchron and like super heavy samurai at full power so um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Genix finally gets to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So, I mean, that's that's a thing worth celebrating. But, um, how strong do you guys think this, this deck is? And, uh, what are your thoughts about Genix moving forward? Um, this has been your boy Nistra here, signing out. Peace.